Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into an 11th grade topic, complex numbers. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use it to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what you see today, or even your own homework, you can always put in the comment box below, or visit my Facebook page, at Tumi Senpai, and tell me all about it there. At the end of this video, I'll be linking my 11th grade playlist, in which I cover a lot more topics, so if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. This video is going to have two parts, so if you like, smash subscribe, and let's get started! In my previous video, we introduced the concept of imaginary numbers. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I recommend you check it out. You can find it right up here. But in that video, we talked about how all the numbers that you grew up with actually fall into one camp that we call the real numbers. And then we have this other camp over here that we hadn't ever touched called imaginary numbers. And we gave a bunch of examples. So we know that a real number would be like six. You have whole numbers, natural numbers, integers. You have your rational numbers, your decimals, your irrational numbers. So these are going to be your real numbers. And we said your imaginary numbers will have that I there. But what happens if you try to combine a real and imaginary number? Let's say you had six plus I in this case. What do we do if we have this combination of a real and an imaginary number? Well, if you were to try to do this, something special does happen. Although you can't simplify this any more than that because you can't actually combine a real and an imaginary number. They're in two separate camps. There is no simplifying them. When you do something like this, you get what we call a complex number. And a complex number is just any number that has a real component and an imaginary component. So if you look at this, you can see that the real component, the six, is here, and your imaginary component, the I, is here. Now don't think that you just can have an I there, or you just have to have an I there. Let's say you had something like this, 10 and three I. If you were to try to combine those like this, you would still have a complex number, this will be your real number, and this will be your imaginary portion. Notice that the real number will always be without an I, and your imaginary portion, this three here, is always going to be attached to the I. So this is your imaginary portion of your complex number. You don't even have to stop with addition here. You can also do something like this. Let's say you have negative 25, and you have this six I here. If you had something like negative 25 minus 6i, you know that the negative 25 came from the real portion. This is your real component of your complex. And you have this 6 or negative 6 that came from the imaginary camp, which makes up your imaginary component of your complex number. So your complex number is just going to be a number that has a real component and an imaginary component. And you can add, multiply, subtract, and divide complex numbers, but we can handle that in a different video. But what if I told you that actually all the numbers that you've dealt with in the past are complex numbers? Would you believe me? Well, let's say we had a number like this. Let's say we had 101 plus, let's say 27i, right? This is clearly a complex number. We have a real component and we have an imaginary component. The real component is going to be that 101 and your imaginary component will be that 27, which is attached to the i. But what if I said, instead of that 27 here, you had a zero. So there's a zero attached to the I. Now, what do you get when you multiply anything times a zero? Well, this will go away. So what's left? You just have your real component. Well, if you just have a real component, that's just going to be a real number. So you can think of all your real numbers as complex numbers, except they all have a zero for their imaginary component. And vice versa, 
your imaginary numbers will be pretty much complex numbers with a zero for the real component. So that's just an extra bit of information so you can see how your complex numbers really do play a part in what we see today all around us, even if we're not quite aware of it. But now that we've talked a little bit about complex numbers in a very general sense, let's try to graph our complex numbers. Now graphing complex numbers will actually be very simple and that's because you're going to be doing the same exact thing that you always did when you graphed your x and y coordinates. The main difference is instead of having an x axis and a y axis, you're going to have a real axis and you're going to have an imaginary axis. But you're going to handle this the same exact way. So in order to graph this point, you would move along your x axis wherever this tells you to go. So if this is positive, you're moving to the right. If it's negative, you're moving to the left. If it's zero, you stay right here at the center. So let's say you had a complex number. Let's say four plus two i. Just like you would for your x component of your x, y point, you would then move left and right on your real axis for the real component. So this tells us we're going to go one, two, three, four. And just like your y component, you would move up and down the imaginary axis for this component here. It lets us know we're going to be moving up too. So one, two, three, four, one, two, if we're going to graph that, we're going to say this point here is our four plus two i. Let's say we had another imaginary number. Instead of four plus two i, let's say we had a negative three minus three i. And we want to graph that. Well, just like you would on your x axis, you're going to start on your real axis and go back three. So one, two, three. And you're going to go instead of up on your y axis or down on your y axis, you're going to be moving up and down on your imaginary axis. This tells us we're going down three. So one, two, three. So it's going to be right here. This is going to be our negative three minus three. So you see, graphing your complex numbers shouldn't be that difficult because all you're doing is treating it as if you were graphing an x, y point. You're going to be focusing on the real component and the imaginary component and graphing them accordingly. So I hope you were able to follow along today's video and I hope you now know a little bit more about your complex numbers. However, if you have any questions about what you saw today or even on homework, you can always put it in the comment box below or visit my Facebook page at Tumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found a video helpful. And if you found a video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share the video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I really hope this helped with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney. Here's your playlist. And this has been another session of Tutor Me Senpai.